When John Adams became president, it marked the first peaceful transition of power the United States and modern democracy had ever known. And that's ironic, because Adams was known as a hothead and kind of obnoxious, which made him just the guy to butt heads with France. France and England were at war, and American ships traveling to Europe were being attacked by the French. People in the United States were demanding a war, and the always argumentative Adams wouldn't give them one. He was the first president who faced the immediate threat of war and fought back with diplomacy. Unfortunately, his decision to resort to tough talk rather than tough actions made him unpopular with a lot of people in his own party. Still, history has been kind to our second president's actions during the crisis. Stop and think if Adams had gone to war with France. First of all, there never would have been a Louisiana Purchase. The United States of America might very well end at the Appalachians. Hear that? Had we gone to war, some cowboys in Texas might be wearing 10-gallon berets. History has been a little less than kind to the Alien and Sedition Acts signed by Adams during the French crisis. But John Adams was a brilliant man, but he could be hard-headed and blustery and just stubborn. And the Alien and Sedition Acts were four laws that essentially prevented people from criticizing the government. Well, the big problem with that is it's in violation of the First Amendment of freedom of the press. And if you're going to violate an amendment, don't violate the First Amendment. I mean, it's just so obviously wrong. The acts were very unpopular with Adam's old friend, Thomas Jefferson, who ran against him and helped our second president become our first one-term president. The two had feuded for a while. Adams was a Federalist who wanted a strong central government, while Jefferson insisted that power be held by the states. To simplify, Adams might have argued that only the federal government was strong enough to keep all the states in line, and Jefferson might have argued that what happens in Virginia stays in Virginia. He thought a too strong government might put America right back where it started. Adams, the first president to live in the White House, left after about three months, but not before writing these famous words about the building. May none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. Whatever else may have been said about him, the words honest and wise certainly did apply to John Adams.